If you are in this country, employed and earning a salary, then you are aware of the recent court decision to rule in favor of uh, President William Ruto to have the National Social Security Fund NSSF charges increased to 2,000 shillings monthly. Now, this ruling is not just but any ruling because in some way now, a sitting president can expect the courts to rule in his favor. This is something we were first forgetting under former president Uhuru Kenyatta's tenure. Now, let's travel back and see how far we have come. Now, Uhuru Kenyatta's battle with the judiciary in Kenya is not just a recent occurrence. No, it is a war whose battle lines were drawn up back from 2017 when former Chief Justice David Maraga annulled his election. Now, the election commissioner had declared incumbent Uhuru Kenyatta the winner by a margin of 1.4 million votes and Wailo Dinga, a man who has won for the seat separately, rushed to court claiming that the entire IABC commissioner in charge of the elections was warten and demanded resignations and prosecutions. Now, President Kenyatta said he would respect the court's decision, but also branded the judges crooks. Wali, hapo awali, nilikuwa raisi mutarajiwa. Sinikweli? Si maraga na watu yake yao akora hao amesema ati basi hiyo uchaguzi ipote. Sindivyo amesema? Sasa mimi sana siyo raisi mutarajiwa. Mimi ni raisi ambao amekalia kiti. Looking at the video of Mr. Kenyatta scratching his buttocks though, however, makes you wonder why he did not complete what he started. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not allowed to scratch your buttocks without smelling your hand after. You have to smell it. Otherwise, it makes no sense at all. You have to smell it. I don't care who you are, where you are, you scratch it, you smell it. It's like refusing to sniff your underwear, like that is not the standard way of not knowing if they're clean or not. Now. Do not try to doubt whatever you've just seen. That is a president abusing the judiciary. Yes, it is not a movie, but we cannot really blame Uhuru Kenyatta for abusing the judiciary. He might have been angry. What we need to ask ourselves is whether he's the only Kenyan president who has ever publicly gone into an abuse raid. Turns out that he might not be the only one. In fact, he might have been taking lessons from the best. Even presidents that many Kenyans deem as good presidents, like former president Mwai Kibaki, were really good at handling insults. <laughs> But just maybe, just maybe, Uhuru Kenyatta perfected the art of abusing. So it is true what they say, that the best students sometimes outsmart their teachers, and Uhuru Kenyatta is no exception to this rule. Ah, kwani hii watu wanaona sisi ni wajinga namna gani? It cannot... And if you don't believe me, then just maybe, just maybe, this will convince you that he really perfected their arts. In fact, he became so good to the point that he decided to come up with rules for the game when you could abuse like the one time when one member of parliament decided to abuse his mother and miraculously lost all his education certificates simply because he broke the rules to the game. <laughs> Did you know just how angry you must be to make a man that decides to wipe off your digital footprint? <laughs> Since we now have the background of how angry President Uhuru Kenyatta could get, let's ask ourselves the question, why the courts really wrong as Uhuru Kenyatta made the country think? Now, the 2010 constitution, yes, the new one, clearly envisions a judiciary that understands the independence and interdependence of the two offices. It either looks like someone in either of the offices did not read and understand the document well. More than once, the former retired Chief Justice Maraga accused the executive of interfering with the independence of the judiciary. Kenyans were treated to fist fights between the two when the executive, on the other hand, pointed a finger at the judiciary for deliberately sabotaging the government programs through biased court judgments. At times, the judiciary acts in a manner 
that throws roadblocks in front of the proper execution of lawful executive and legislative authority. Na hii nimesema na siwacha nisema. And in particular the issuance of injunctive interim orders especially ex parte Truth with his word, when Uhuru Kenyatta got into office, he refused to appoint a whopping 40 Bwana judges that were cleared for office by the Judicial Service Commission. 40 Bwana judges. It doesn't stop there. When David Maraga asked to meet the president over the refusal to appoint the judges, he refused. Under the advice of A.G. Kihara Kariuke, a man appointed to the position of A.G. in 2018 after Mugai quit. Maybe we should begin from that. Get the guy. Quit. Now, an editorial on the Standard newspaper gave us an insight into why Get guy quit. It said that Jay Muturi was viewed as being close to President Kenyatta, while Get guy appeared as a neutral who ascended to the AG's position not because of political connections, but due to his rich grasp on understanding of the law and many years of active practice. So, the wrong man for the job. Yes, the script is not new. Few years forward, it has come back to haunt Kidure Kideki, a man overqualified for the job he has been given. Guess who has his job? Brigiji. I have taken the decision to take a break from elective politics starting 10th of August 2022. I will use the break to reorganize myself. On January 26, 2016, Uru Kenyatta announced the creation of the CAS position in every ministry. For those of you who know why this position was created, it was simply a position to say thank you to all those who campaigned for the president and never made it to win in the elections in 2017. Now, I would like for you to pay attention to the president's opening remarks when he introduced this new position. And I quote, today, I have a few names that I would like to read. But before I do so, let me say that for the efficient operation of the government, and indeed taking into account the need of having a government that reflects the diversity of our nation and indeed one that can help me on the delivery of my mandate, I pledge to Kenyans over the campaign period and also having consulted the constitutional mandate, body and receiving advice from the Public Service Commission as required by Article 132 4A of our Constitution, I have decided to establish a new position in government, the position of the Chief Administrative Secretary in all our ministries. Yeah. Who gives the president that kind of a speech? Now, okay, back to what matters. The ladies and gentlemen was the president confirming that indeed he worked with the Public Service Commission in creating the position of CISS. Fine. Then how the did the people surrounding himself with that look into the legality of the matters like this did not tell him that it was unlawful to create such a position without proper public participation because Okyom Taras challenge of the position in court was given a fair ruling after the High Court declared the position unconstitutional on the basis of lack of pu public participation. The court has landed blows on President Uhuru Kenyatta's government in landmark rulings that have always made it look like the president had no clue whatsoever on how to run the government. Or he doesn't, or he didn't care to ask what legal implications his actions might have, or he just didn't give a hoot about the course anymore, going by the fact that he even has the audacity, or had the audacity, to tell the international courts to get the hell off Kenya, like the reason when Kenya lost to Somalia over a maritime border dispute. At the very onset, Kenya wishes to indicate that it rejects in totality and does not recognize the findings in the decision. Indeed, when you look at the list of the major issues that the court 
found to be legal, you are sometimes tempted to ask, were they out to finish him? Now, the biggest infrastructural project that Kenya had ever undertaken, the construction of the standard gauge railway line, a project that was to see President Uhuru Kenyatta leave a lasting landmark on Kenya as he stepped out of office, was recently declared illegal. His intention to transform Kenya into a digital country through the Huduma number identification system was too found to be legal. His move to save Nairobi from the Mike Songo by creating the Nairobi Metropolitan Services Unit was also found to be illegal. When the judiciary was going broke and he decided to introduce the minimum tax to have every company pay tax in Kenya, the courts declared that legal. The courts have dodged or did dodge his leadership even to the smallest of the bullings like the prison declaration that you still have to receive government services whether vaccinated or not, especially that time that we're fighting with the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. They say that was also useless. Now the list goes on and on from, from this. We can have a clear picture of how the courts were out to finish Uhuru Kenyatta makes it the right time for me to introduce that meme for finish him. Jeremy, go back, go back. There, there. Mm. Uhuru Kenyatta's true feeling about the judiciary was seen in the last interaction the two men had in 2020 when Uhuru Kenyatta was basically telling CJ Maraga, who is boss now? When you give injunctions, because I appreciate what, uh, what CJ is saying. Yes, you need more money. But CJ, your courts are the same ones. When we propose certain tax measures, you are the first ones to say injunction. Where will it come from? Apana, that one, oh, here. The same mouth, In words that we understand, we talk about what to see what jinga buana. So it wasn't a surprise that the first agenda for William Ruto when he got into office was to appoint all the judges that had not been appointed by Huru Kenyatta. Smart man, your interpretation will be left to you. Was this William Ruto saying, indeed, we need to be on the right side with the courts if we're going to run this government?